What's up everybody, it is Lawrence again, and I'm just gonna jump right into this one because this is something I've been waiting for for a while, an actual redesign to the Vapor Max, and it's called the Vapor Max 2020 Flyknit. All right guys, so before we begin, I wanna ask you a huge favor, which is hit the subscribe button if you've watched more than one of my videos and you are absolutely not appalled by hearing my voice and seeing me on screen, and uh, definitely hit the thumbs up button so that the algorithms can pick me all the way up. I've loved the Vapor Max uh, since its inception, but I've actually not bought a new pair because they basically lasted me for quite a while. So a lot of you know issues about potentially this puncturing and not lasting a long time. So this is a, the OG Vapor Max, which is the platinum colorway that literally released on the first day that uh, the Vapor Max was launched. I still have it. I still wear it, and it still looks great. And what I would do want to say about it is uh, the reason I haven't bought a new pair was because the changes in the last three years have been so incremental, barely anything. It's mainly changes to the upper that I just have no real interest. I really love the upper of the OG, so why go forward? 2020 changes all of that. 2020 basically reconceptualizes what the Vapor Max is, and they basically made it a much more sustainable shoe than ever before and it's part of the new ethos that they have. And it all starts with a box. So I uh, I actually got a very similar box when I bought the uh, Crater Highs or the Converse Crater Highs. And this is contributing to all the things that Nike's doing in creating new technologies with recycled materials, new ways to manufacture ma recycled materials, and honestly just new types of construction that we haven't seen before uh, because Nike hasn't had these these recyclable technologies in the past. The last interesting thing about the box is when you open it, there was actually no tissue paper. Uh, the the Vapor Max is basically just sat in there all by them lonesome without without that little companion. And I actually think that's a great thing. I actually don't think shoes, unless they're gonna bleed ink, probably need the tissue paper anymore. And hopefully in the future, uh, less and less manufacturers will use it because I do feel like it's, it's just a wasted piece of paper for no reason. So normally we start with the upper, uh, like we always do, but I'm gonna actually gonna read some some stats off first because I think it's pretty important for the typical consumer as they look at the Vapor Max to view it in a very different way. Uh, one of the first things is the Vapor Max air unit is 75% recycled material, which is huge. The original Vapor Max, actually, I didn't know this, was actually at least 50% recycled material. So even the original Vapor Max was, uh, was, was pretty good. The second thing is the fly knit that is used here for the yarn. 67% is post-industrial recycled content by weight. Uh, this includes things like plastic bottle waste, which is awesome. Then you have the molded dual density ortholite sock liner, which is inside and that's 50% recycled content and amplifies underfoot comfort while the tongue features at least 80% recycled foam. So that's freaking awesome. Then you have this TPU on the heel clip and that contains 60% recycled TPU. And it's got this like world swirl effect. And finally, the outsole incorporates Nike Grind, uh, which is over here. And Nike Grind is basically finding all the bits and pieces of outsoles and, and, and midsoles and putting them all together to utilize. Uh, otherwise they would have just honestly just gone to waste and then be in a landfill somewhere. And the overall shoe itself is at least 50% recycled content by weight. So that's a huge change. So basically half of this shoe is all recycled and that's huge. And I really, really love the concepts that the Nike's pushing. I don't see anybody even close to what Nike's doing. I really hope Adidas is doing something similar in the near future. Uh, Adidas has their parlay line, but it's literally like just a handful of shoes. And uh, this seems like a completely redesign of, of Nike's ethos on how to manufacture, create sustainability, as well as honestly just create new concepts uh, with, uh, with new types of materials. So with all that said, let's start with the upper like we usually do. Uh, so, like I said earlier, this is 67% uh, recycled fly knit, and so the other 33% are some type of other material that's probably typical. I actually didn't notice this until I was started recording, but the fly knit on every single pair seems like it's drastically different. On the lateral side here, you have purple, greens, and blues on this. Then on the flip side, you have a different color palette that's also there. And uh, that is predominantly gonna be orangey and almost like a dark purple and some blue and yellows uh, incorporated onto that side. And what's interesting is because the lateral and medial side have different panels, the very front of the sneaker where the toe box is, 
incorporates both into the uh, in, into the knit pattern, which I think is interesting. It's a really uh, interesting design cue. I don't think most people are going to notice it until you, you have an upfront look at the sneaker. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I actually th saw completely different colors on this other shoe when I was about to prep for this video. And on this side of the other sneaker, so this would be my left foot, you can see this is predominantly orange and blue on the lateral side. On this side, it's pink and green. And then the toe box is finally the culmination of both of those sides coming together. Really interesting design cue. I didn't realize all four panels uh, or all four major panels of the sneakers would be so different. And uh, that's actually really exciting. I don't, you know, maybe some people are gonna love it. Some people are not gonna love it, but I, I think it's really, really cool in terms of what, what Nike's doing because it really, adds to the aesthetic that these are not easy materials to either create and you have to kind of find scraps and those scraps are what you create these shoes with and i think uh you know maybe they did it on purpose maybe they didn't but it's it's cool then on the lateral side you have a nike black swoosh that is actually embroidered in it's really weird because usually they they they, they do some type of hyperfuse on it um to create the swoosh so i do like the fact that they embroidered it it looks a little more uh i guess almost like put together you know, scrapped together which is a major ethos of the design for the sneaker. Then I want to move over to the, uh, the back panel areas. So if you look at this, there's this purple fuse that runs along the, the heel cup and heel clip. The heel clip is made out of a TPU. And then on the very back, you have a yellow pull tab with Nike swoosh on it. Then on the tongue, if you can see that, that almost looks like a mural. Uh, maybe that's probably where the foam of, I, I can't remember what the percentage is, in terms of recycled materials, but that's what's composing of the, of, the, of the foam here. It's actually a super hard foam, which I think is interesting. I've never felt a material like this, and it looks super interesting uh, on the shoe, shoe itself. And I wanted to dedicate some time to the lacing system. The lacing system is based on fly ease. When I ordered the shoes, I actually had no idea that they were actually based on fly ease. I just pressed the button and hoped for the best uh, on sneakers. But these, this is actually the first pair of fly ease uh, sneakers that I am probably gonna keep and own. And what Flyzies is, and the reason they designed it, was to help people uh, with either disabilities or things like that to have an easier way to put on sneakers without needing to tie shoelaces. And so what the system looks like is it starts with the back. You would put your foot in and you pull this tab. And by pulling this tab, everything cinches, right? And so you can see that over here. And once it's cinched in, all the strings over here tighten up. And once it tightens up, you have a nice little snug for, fit under your foot. Once you want to take it off, you simply pull up on this release tab. You'll hear a couple clicks. And then from the clicks, uh, you know that it's released. Then in the front, you have a very similar material, which is the TPU based toe guard. And it's, it's actually relatively small, but it's going to keep at least some materials and debris at the very edge of the shoe from touching the fly directly, which is obviously less durable material than TPU. Then going to the most major redesign for me, which is the Vapor Max units. Like I said, they haven't changed this in three generations, and I feel like this was definitely due. I can actually understand all the gripes that people had on the old Vapor Max because of how it actually felt a little odd walking on it, which is, you know, it had this kind of like 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 very, very distinct uh division between the, the the toe of the shoe, the midfoot, and the back area. Also, the back area was, was a lot more unstable. Uh, when you read the blog post from Nike on the Vapor Max 2020, they do talk about how uh, they've created much more streamlined Vapor Max units that help out uh, with stability. And so it's a much more kind of even keeled uh, Vapor Max unit in, in this new unit. The other thing is the, uh, the pattern on the bottom, as you can see here, is actually very different. Um, so I'm gonna pull out the old Vapor Max here. Whereas the old one really looked like dentures, uh, this is basically like snaking S's uh, all throughout. And so I, I, I assume the idea was to have more air underfoot on your midfoot instead of having all these random dents uh, that you would have on the top one. And I think it's an absolute winner. I don't feel those same sensations. Remember, I actually like this sneaker, but I definitely do not feel the same sensations as I do here. It's a much more comfortable sneaker and you still get all the benefits of walking on full length air, which is this cushier unit. Uh, I do have to say that compared to the old Vapor Max unit, you feel the air a little less for sure, but I think it's a great trade off between comfort, uh, walkability, as well as really just style. So finally going to the bottom of the sneaker, I want to talk about the Nike Grind. So Nike Grind, like I said, is, is a bunch of 
outsole and midsole materials that are basically grinded up to create new materials. Uh, in the hip, Space Hippies, they created a new foam called Crater Foam using grind. On here, they seem to have used the grind to fill in space for where the rubber is. So over here is, is where the rubber is with the night grind that you have in the green over here and finally on the bottom uh, as well. The last thing that is not apparent, and I definitely want to compare this back to the uh, original Vapor Max, it feels like this sneaker is significantly higher PSI than the old Vapor Max. I was squishing old Vapor Max and it was like relatively squishy on, on the midsole. You actually don't have as much of that here. There's less give on the uh, on the Vapor Max unit. I think that's a good thing because probably part of the instability of the old sneaker was because it bent a little too easily. So what are my thoughts on this sneaker? Let's, uh, let's talk about the style. I don't love this colorway. There's a lot of things I actually dislike about this uh, about this colorway. Um, I specifically don't like the swirliness of the TPU heel counter. I specifically do not like this kind of like lanyard thing uh, that is for that lock unit on the flyies unit. I don't love that. Uh, I also don't love the the, the look of that lock. Um, I feel like it just clashes with everything else there. The fly knit I do like. So I do like the different colors. I, I like the the aesthetic, and I really like the kind of piece together look of that fly knit. And uh, I, I feel like that works all together, but I really wish there were something different uh, in the back area because I, I, it loses its appeal for me. The other thing about the sole unit, I think that, that is important because of the way it is structured like much more similar to a regular sole unit, as opposed to kind of have the Vapor Max had very distinct pods that were completely separated from each other. Whereas this has overlapping uh, Vapor Max or air units inside of it. You're not likely as likely to get caught uh, on stairs or when you're driving and things like that. And I think that's a huge difference for a lot of different people. And then it comes to the flight upper. It's a really soft upper. There's nothing to complain about. I love flying it, so there's nothing wrong with it. Um, with the fly ease, I could I could take it or leave it. I almost feel like for me, this is more a slip on than it would be a fly ease shoe. Like I like the fact that I can tighten it, uh, but I don't really need to. You know, I like the fact that they included it. Uh, the aesthetic isn't the worst, but I don't think uh, laces would have been bad on this either. It might have added an actual interesting aesthetic to it. And you know, the, this locking system for me, not a huge deal. Um, I, I, I can tie my shoes and it's, uh, you know, I can probably just end up using these as a slip on more than, than the kind of like needing to do this every single time. When it comes down to sizing, I would just recommend whatever sneaker size you went with, with your Vapor Maxes, if you have a pair, if not, any of your fly knit shoes will become a very good gauge. So the infinity knits and things like that. Uh, I went true to size on these and they fit perfectly. So I would say go true to size. But if you have a specific kind of varying type of shoe size that you typically do for fly knits or knit type shoes, I would definitely go with that. And that's it guys. This was a pretty long review, but this was a super exciting shoe to review. And I just feel like there's so many elements and a lot of people are interested in Vapor Maxes. If you have any questions, leave that in the comments below. Did you cop a pair? They're actually, I just realized they're sold out, but they're releasing another one uh, in a couple days. So there should be plenty of colorways. I don't think the Vapor Max is gonna be hard to buy in any way, shape or form. They never have been. So you know, just wait your turn. This colorway might be hard to find, but otherwise if you're not in love with this colorway, just wait a couple weeks or months and, and you'll have exactly what you want. Uh, but until next time, this was the Vapor Max 2020 Fly Knit. Peace.